Good morning, y'all. Welcome back. Today, I want to talk to you about concrete. I'm here in Mexico, and there's a lot of examples of successes and failures here. And I want to make sure that you know how to avoid those failures when you're having your own house built or when you're doing foundations, even foundations for your solar array. So let me take a walk with you and show you some of the examples of what I found. Now, before I get started, I want to let you know that I'm starting a sister channel for putting fun things that I do when I'm not building stuff. And so it's been requested that I show some, some of the scuba diving videos that I've made. And so I've put some of those on there. The name of that channel is gonna be Ray Does Cool Stuff instead of Ray Builds Cool Stuff. And there'll be playlists for scuba diving, land clearing maybe, uh, the way we raise our cattle. Um, there's gonna also be like, you know, I, I maintain roads uh, going to my house, three and a half miles of road with old, heavy Detroit diesel iron motor grader. And uh, I'll show you some of that too. I decided to make this video early in the morning because it's a little quieter. I'll try to speak up above the noise. and But let me show you now some of the stuff that I find here. So here's an example of a railing that comes in to, a, to the wall. And this was probably put in and then a patch made around it. And what's gonna happen is that this steel is going to move and cause this patch to come loose and chip out. Kind of like you see the beginnings of it there. That's pretty minor. But we have other examples of the interaction of steel and concrete. guy hello puppy and and this right my guy yeah you're doing your job you're protecting people so there's a couple of things that happen that create issues here see here they have the structural concrete and then they have a cap on top because they have this tile roof that they set in and now water is going to go in there and over time it's going to get into this concrete because this concrete has reinforcing in it and the reinforcing is steel rebar and if that steel rebar has, if water can get to that steel rebar, it's gonna make that steel rebar rust. And when it does, it expands. And when it expands, it fractures the concrete. And taken to the ultimate, this is what happens. The rebar rusts, it expands, and it blows the concrete loose. Rebar is almost all gone here, but it has broken the concrete, fractured the concrete, which allows more water to get in, and then it falls apart. These balusters here, as you can see, those can let water get in at the top of the joint. And then the rebar starts to rust, and it fractures, and falls apart. Now, you need a good two inches of cover for concrete to be protected, for the rebar to be protected from the moisture. And look at that. 
what you have here is a steel rebar mat in this rather narrow profile roof. This is a structural, spanning structural slab. And when the concrete was poured here, the rebar was left laying on the form. And then the concrete guys, when they poured it, they kind of tried to pull it up, but it didn't get up very far. And because it didn't have much concrete covering it, the moisture came through the concrete in vapor form. And, cause it's underneath the cover, right? But in vapor form, it came in and attacked the rebar and the rebar expanded and blew the concrete off. And that's the rebar that is the structural support for this roof. So it's very important that we maintain two inches of cover. When you get ready to have your house built, make sure that when you watch them pouring the concrete slab, they're gonna have the forms ready. And what you wanna do is inspect for them. And any place you see the steel reinforcing mat within two inches, at least get an inch and a half, within two inches of the form, you need to point it out to them and make sure that they get in there and move that rebar away from the form so that it's protected by two inches of concrete. And then it'll last a nice long time. At my house, I did that, but there's one step at my house. And on that step, on the riser of that step, the vertical riser of that step, 15 years after that slab was poured, I saw a little spall come off the face of that. About that big around, conical, and about three quarters of an inch back from the face of the concrete, I saw the end of a piece of rebar, just a little end. And the end of that rebar, with only three quarter inches of cover, after 15 years, had absorbed enough moisture, and it's under cover. There's an overhang, roof overhang, that protects it. It doesn't get wet very often, but just water coming into the concrete made that steel rust and that steel blew the blew the concrete away from the end of that piece of rebar and it's like a fuse it's like a time bomb in 15 years three quarters of an inch if there had been two inches of cover that rebar would have never been an issue so be careful um, and also, if you see them, the, the steel mat is laying on the vapor barrier of the slab on the fill. Make sure that it gets pulled up and placed on chairs. If they tell you, oh, it doesn't matter, we're going to pull it up when we pour. Remember what happens when they say they'll pull it up when they pour. This is what happens. This is going to fail going to fall apart. Here's a nice new building. I watched this one get built over the last couple of years and it looks really nice, doesn't it? You see how thin the concrete profiles are? Last year, I was here for six months and I watched them build a building. It went seven stories and the concrete walls that supported that seven stories, they poured them one floor at a time and those were only six inches thick. There's a construction site right down the road here. They poured them six inches thick. And will the building fall because the walls are only six inches thick? I don't think so. But it does make it much harder. And that's only a single layer of rebar, it does make it much harder for them to ensure that the rebar has adequate cover to not cause the problems associated with expansion. I, I talked to a friend of mine yesterday who's a building scientist and he said some people call that con uh, 
uh, rebar jacking because it jacks the concrete. But you can see this construction site. And I'm going to, if you can't tell, I'm going to tell you that that structural wall is only six inches thick. And you can see the coal joints of where they poured it on different days and then they patched that in. And you can see already places where moisture is going to be able to get in and get to that rebar. And this is the structural concrete. Let me get away from these puppy dogs. This building is looks to be three stories high. The building I watched built last year was seven. And they're able to do these really inexpensively. Look here, this is a good detail. There's a little groove on the underside and that allows water to drip off instead of running back to the building. And that helps to protect the concrete below from getting constantly wet. And that might, that might save the concrete below from premature deterioration. And then they will plaster the outside of the building when they get done, it'll look all clean and neat. But how many fuses do they have? How many little time bombs do they have where water's gonna get in and start rusting that rebar and making it fall apart? Structural concrete stairs. Looks pretty rough. They'll probably cover that with tile and it'll look really beautiful when they get done. Well, how long it lasts? Time will tell. It'll last as long as I do, I'm sure. But I just wanted to show you some of the important things that need to be done. Let's keep the sun out of y'all's eyes. Some of the important things that need to be done when you do concrete work to ensure that the concrete lasts the hundred years that it should last. And without rebar, it could last a thousand years. If there was no rebar in the concrete, it could last a thousand years. The rebar holds the concrete together when it cracks, but it also is what destroys it. And if we built all of our concrete with stainless steel rebar, probably make our building last a long time. When you, last thing, when you want to embed steel into rebar, maybe you have a concrete patio and you want to drill holes and put posts down into it to have railings. There's a couple of ways of doing that, but if you're going to put steel in concrete, put stainless. You can just put a stainless stub down into the concrete and then weld the post above it if you want to have a painted you know a regular steel normal steel uh, railing that you paint you can weld it to the top of the stainless but whatever goes into that concrete needs to be stainless it needs to not rust and blow that concrete apart the other way that I've done it is also to put PVC cups embedded down into the concrete that leave a PVC recess it's got its own danger because concrete tends to crack away from circular pipe penetrations. But it does give you a way to embed steel down into it and uh, not have it rust. I prefer to go the stainless route, but there are more than one ways to skin that cat. Please like and subscribe to this channel and go check out the new one. Ray does cool stuff. We'll show you. You know, we'll show you some stuff that we do without clogging up this channel with things that are off topic to building appropriately and sustainably and, and building batteries and energy storage systems and all that. We'll keep that on this channel and we'll take the fun stuff and put it on that other one. Thank you for watching.
for watching. Y'all have a good day. Bye-bye.